Hunter came to us at about a year of age, uh, barely able to walk. Both of his uh, rear hips, both of his hips were uh, degenerative, and he had the classic genetic hip dysplasia. They had been to the University of uh, Pennsylvania, and they told them they needed a double hip replacement, which they couldn't afford because it is very expensive. So they came here as a second opinion. They had found out about us somewhere, and they thought perhaps the underwater treadmill and the rehab would be helpful to him. When I examined the x-rays, I found that one of the hips was actually salvageable if we did a procedure called prolotherapy. And where that's where we inject the tendons, and the tendons, like rubber bands, take this leg and they actually suck it right back into the hip. And because he was still growing, he was only a year of age, and they grow to about a year and a half, we had the possibility if we drive this hip uh, bone in here that the, now the hip joint will close around it the way it normally should. The other side, however, was too badly deformed. And we actually then talked about the surgery that we used to do when I first got out of school before we had all these fancy plates and bone pins and all that stuff, which was called a femoral head excision. And that removes the top of the leg bone and the body then forms a false joint in the muscle. Because the problem with dysplasia is the pain. So these are banging together all the time and the dog can't walk. The joint, if the dog tries to sit, there's no joint to lock this in. So they really have a lot of pain. So when that part is removed and the pain is gone, and then we put the dog in the underwater treadmill and rehabbed his leg and built his strength up, and he's been fine for several months. Unfortunately, being the now happy dog that he is, uh, playing, he tore the patellar tendon, which is the procedure we then went ahead to do with the stem cells to get the stem cells to regenerate and, and put that knee back together. We're going to make our incision uh, in here and then extract the fat and then we'll process the fat uh, and then later we'll inject the stem cells. So the advantage is we're using the animal's own tissue so there's no kind of rejection. There are no drugs that he has to take for the rest of his life um, as with like a transplant for example. It'll be a little bit bloody. His fat is very bloody. Yeah. We need about half a jar full, so we're gonna get some more. Fortunately, most dogs and people have plenty of fat. So some of these cells, we're gonna take some extra fat on this dog because uh, some of the cells then we can freeze uh, and send to the the uh, home laboratory and they'll actually they'll freeze them so that if we need more cells to do another procedure later then we can uh, instead of operating on the dog we just call the lab and tell them to unfreeze the cells and send them to us so the great thing about having this stem cell laboratory in hospital is then while i continue to work on the dog uh, Aaron and Lisa can start the process of mixing and using the enzyme processes that are needed to extract the stem cells. Hunter here, he needed essentially two surgeries. We did the one surgery to remove the fat and the stem cells, which normally that would be all we'd do. We'd process the stem cells and inject them into a joint later. But Hunter had the luxated patellar tendon so I needed to repair that so that when we put the stem cells in later in the day, it would actually then hold and would work. So while well, Lisa and Aaron were going through the steps that they needed to, which takes about three to four hours, I was able to repair the knee and then Hunter went to recovery and stayed asleep most of the day until we would get the stem cells back into him and then he went home. When stem cell first came out, it was almost $4,000, $5,000. Well, most people can't afford that. We did do a couple of stem cells under those conditions, but we had to ship the cells all over the country, and it was this big deal. Well, now, in the last year, a company has come out that will set you up with the equipment, train you how to do it, 
license you to do it in your own hospital. Well, now when I found that out, we jump right on that because it cuts the price in half. Well, this is the finished surgery. This looks great. There's really no swelling here. And uh, he's actually walking on this already because this tendon was uh, very loose. The kneecap was over here. And that's what that little white thing represents. So you can see that there's no way the dog could walk properly because the leg will just keep twisting. And so what we did is we put this back in and then we did some very thick sutures from here to here and here to here. And then we went around this and hooked it behind uh, this. This is a bone here that's actually, it's loose. You can get underneath it. Um, which doesn't show in this model, but and basically then this pulls this in here. So it stays there, so now he can walk and move normally. And then we injected stem cells in here to help heal this tendon, and we put more stem cells inside the joint to uh, continue to strengthen the ligaments that are inside the joint, because when this is out, then the inside ligaments are taking much more pressure. So they're probably stretched or even partially torn in there. So the stem cells will cover that. And we should end up with a pretty darn good knee. Good, good. It's remarkable for what you did for him, I know that. <laughs> yeah, he's, uh, that looks really good. I, I really, um, I'm, I'm pleasantly surprised at that. And then we injected some stem cells up in the, in the normal hip okay. here too for him. So he should do much, much better. Now a couple days ago, he wouldn't sit like that. He's very cautious. Stick it this way. leg would be straight. Got it. Now he's actually to where he's he's sitting. Just so good boy. Look at him. He's like no. looking at the camera. You're a ham. You are. No, he he is. Is. He's a ham when he's in the tub. He's a ham when he's on the camera. Huh? But he's... Yeah, he's come along great. Right? Yeah, he's. Uh, I'm, I'm surprised he's getting around this well. Yeah, actually, I'm really... too for <laughs> these first uh, few days. But yeah. uh, He's a tough guy, and I'll tell you, we're just seeing better and better and better results with those stem cells wherever it's, we put them. That's amazing. It's a miracle because oh, boy. for all that you've done for Hunter from when he first came here, I don't think he'd be here if you hadn't done what you did for him. Well, thank you. I appreciate he's, that. He's very, such a different dog. Yeah. Now he can walk on all four legs. <laughs> Hunter, I'm convinced, would not be alive today. We probably would have had to euthanize him because of the pain uh, had we not been able to do these procedures. And these procedures are in the realm of alternative and regenerative medicine, so not every veterinarian does this. You have to go learn these things outside of what we're normally taught. And that's our philosophy here. Whatever's new, whatever's working, Prolo was first used in humans, for example. I had it done to myself to find out what it was. Helped me greatly in my low back, and then I adapted this procedure to animals. But even if you ask most MDs what prolotherapy is, they don't know, and they don't do it. And it's a very simple and easy procedure once you understand how to do it. So that's our philosophy here. Let's find what is new, what's working the best, the laser, etc. now stem cells, and, and let's do it.